Hi and welcome to a quick follow-up video on my Epic versus Threadripper videos. This is just going to be a quick video because I had so many questions on my previous video asking, hey Roman, why did you not just test, test if you can put an Epic CPU into the normal TR4 socket and check what happens. So that's what we will do now. So I already set up everything here. I got the Asus Zenit Extreme. Um, currently I have a uh, Threadripper 1950X in the socket. Uh, just for dims, nothing else is attached to the mainboard. I want to keep the sources for errors um, as small as possible. So I have no VGA in there. I also don't have any SSDs or anything attached because we can just judge by the postcode LED if it boots or not. So we can just press start and yeah, with the 1950X it boots without any issue. I know it's not supposed to be booted by just having the CPU sitting in the socket without a cooler, but it's not really an issue. You can trust me on that. Um, it takes quite a while until, until the CPU gets really hot. But now we can just check the postcode LED. I think I will take a close-up shot of that later so you can actually see what's happening. So basically it's just going th through all the um, postcodes and then eventually stops at D6 or A2 basically because I don't have any VGA installed. And D6 is basically that it ha doesn't have any medium to boot from. So what we will do now is basically just remove the Threadripper CPU from the socket, put in the Epic CPU in the socket and just power on the system and see what's happening. So before we remove the CPU from the socket, we simply just remove the 24 pin connector just to remove standby power and keep the board safe. So that's the Epic from the previous video, from the X-ray video. So as you can see, all the solder and everything, all the residues have been removed. So basically I will just put some thermal paste onto the dies so I can put the heat spreader back on. I already also cleaned the Epic heat spreader from the residue. So uh, yeah, just simply putting some uh, thermal grizzly cryonaut onto the dies. We put back the CPU into this nice mounting frame or how this is called, carrier frame. You can see the heat spreader is still moving, which is fine. So we're putting the CPU with the carrier frame back into the socket. We, know, we already know that it fits the socket because we already compared the notches in the previous video, so we can be sure that it works. So we plug in standby power, interesting, so uh, standby power is not coming up, so it's very interesting, um, standby power doesn't come up, so we simply just take the CPU back out of the socket, there could be uh, several reasons for that, one reason could be that it's a short circuit and some kind of protection kicks in and therefore standby power is not coming up. So this is really interesting when I open the socket, so I can s just gently press the CPU in the socket and as you can see, there's an LED here and also the LED on the side. This LED here also start and reset, they all have LEDs in there. If I press the CPU into the socket, they all power off. So there are only two possible reasons for that. Either the CPU is damaged, which means that there's like a short circuit and there's some kind of protection. Um, that's powering off the board. And the other option would be that there is an ID pin, which basically means um, you have that thing on Socket 2066, for example. So if you put in uh, Skylake X or KB Lake X, the socket can detect which CPU was put in by an ID pin. So uh, depending if this pin is shorted to ground or not, I think it, or it's, it's grounded or not on, on Skylake X, um, the mainboard can tell which CPU was put in because KB Lake X um, doesn't need uh, fiber, so it has direct V core supply, and Sky, uh, Sky Lake X has fiber, so it has CPU input voltage and not uh, V core. But that's a different story. Um, so, my guess would be, as I said before, either CPU is damaged or there is some, some sort of ID pin into the CPU, but we can actually check that. So, what we can do now is that we just simply tape off some of the pins randomly onto the CPU backside of the pins, press it back into the socket see what happens, see if we can figure something out. So we just simply take this piece of tape, randomly glue it to the CPU backside, press it into the socket, see if it shuts off, still shuts off. Okay, so that's not correct. 
So we just try all the positions. Still shuts off. So this looks good. So if we on top press this into the socket, nothing happens. So that's a very good sign. It probably means that somewhere in the top corner here that somewhere there is an ID pin located. So we just have to kind of narrow the search. So I think I pretty much narrowed it down. So I now have this very tiny piece of isolation tape on my finger. It's like one, one by one millimeter, probably even smaller. So I will just try to glue this onto the single pin. And then hopefully the mainboard doesn't shut down anymore. Not even sure what happens. Maybe CPU catches fire or something. <laughs> So I taped this single pin on the back side of the CPU and will now put the CPU back into the socket and then we will see what happens. So the good thing is that the motherboard standby power is not shutting off anymore. That means we got the right pin. So this must be an ID pin just to identify if it's an Epic or 30 bit CPU. And so for normal cases, it just won't allow you to power on your system if you're putting a Epic CPU into your TR4 motherboard. So the CPU power is on, so that's a very good sign. We can see some postcodes, um, but it, does, it shuts down at D0. D0 is part of memory initialization, which kind of makes sense because this board is not tuned for EPIC or probably has some issues with the memory controller of EPIC or whatever, but um, we can see some postcodes. So B4, FC, 3E, um, B7, whatever. So it's trying to initialize the CPU probably works partially, but then it's going to memory initialization and stops. What's also interesting that actually, oh yeah, I have to power it off. Um, the CPU is getting quite warm, which is also a very good sign that the CPU is working. So that means that the TR4 socket and SP3 socket are actually compatible. Also means that Epic and Threadripper pinout are the same, just that the ID pin just di differentiates between Epic and Threadripper, so you cannot just randomly put your Epic CPU into a, thre a Threadripper motherboard, it wouldn't work, uh, similar to what we can see here. But, I mean, we went one step further by just taping the ID pin and trying to get it to work. So, I think if we would put an Epic BIOS onto this motherboard, we could get it to work. So I ended up spending my whole afternoon, also almost my whole evening onto this topic. Um, turned out to be more interesting than I thought it would be. So we managed to get the CPU to boot partially. So we saw some of the postcodes until it went to D0. D0 is part of memory initialization. So I guess because the BIOS is not ready for this, I guess we would need an Epic BIOS to get this to work. I also tried to flash an Epic BIOS onto this motherboard. So there is this Gigabyte Workstation motherboard out there. I took the BIOS from the Gigabyte page, tried to use the, uh, the ASUS flashback simply just renamed the BIOS onto the USB drive, put it into the uh, flashback port, held down the button, it started to flash and then stopped after a few seconds. So basically, um, yeah, the BIOS is not compatible, which was kind of obvious. Still, I tried um, even to flash it over Windows because there was some software flashing tool included from the Gigabyte website, but unfortunately also this failed. So yeah, so what we learned from this is that SP3 socket and TR4 socket are identical. We know that there is an ID pin on the socket to differentiate whether you put in an EPIC or a Threadripper CPU. We know that if you tape this pin that you can still get your EPIC to boot a little bit. Well, not fully through, but we know because it boots partially that the socket has to be identical. So even though I didn't get it to work fully, it was still very entertaining to try this, much more entertaining than I thought. I will, of course, stay on this topic. Maybe I can dig a little bit deeper into this and find some more. So one more thing I would like to add is basically a question from the previous videos. So a lot of people asked how I think it would be possible um, to have a CPU that has four active dice onto the TR4 socket, which only has quad channel and not eight memory channels. Um, so basically, just think about it. It's the same if you just use the TR4 socket and you put your CPU in there and you only use one memory stick. It also works. You just have a huge delay uh, um, between one of the CPU dies and the memory stick, but it's not really an issue. You, you just have a huge latency between them. 
So it would essentially be the same if you had a 32 core, 30 bit CPU, for example, with four dice, but only four memory channels, it would still work. You would have a latency between the, the dice, obviously. It wouldn't be too nice, but it would work. So, so much about this topic. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. See you soon.